vision. Welcome to the D-List, the show where I list things and my name begins with a D. But I do not list other names that begin with D. I want that nasty rumor put to rest right now. Today is a very special episode of the D-List. What makes it so special? The fact that I'm going to spend way longer discussing each item on the list than it would take to actually experience them. That's right, it's my favorite songs that are each shorter than 20 seconds long. Oh, that's right, Beatles. You just barely don't qualify. Ha! How does it feel to not make this list, Beatles? Now you'll just have to fall back on being the most influential musicians of the 20th century. Sure showed them. It's no secret that I'm a fan of comedy and a fan of music, and I love it when the two come together. Both comedy and music can seem effortless at their best, but they both require precision timing and rhythm to actually get right. And when the two are brought together well, the results can be glorious. But if it's true that brevity is the soul of wit, then my long rambling videos must not be particularly clever, but these songs manage to get in and out quickly, spending just enough time to leave a catchy tune and a memorable punchline. Let's line up the songs that are too short to skip. Number 8. First off, let's start out with the nepotism! This first lot goes to two friends of mine who are fellow Geek Vision contributors. I think anyone who's been watching Il Nege long enough knows exactly what I'm picking from him. And then there's some jerk with a camera who's got a couple of ditties that qualify for this list including the first track on his album, Goldmark After Dark. Abstinence, it'll get you laid, laid. But out of all of his numerous fake jingles, I think the one that still makes me laugh the hardest to this day is Detroit. It's a shithole full of people who steal. <laughs> That'll never stop being funny. I know I might be biased because I'm friends with these guys and I kind of work with these guys, but... I seriously love both of these songs, and I couldn't imagine this list without them. Seriously. I'm not just saying that because I hope that next time I'm in California, either Tony or Garrett will pay for in and out But I won't stop them if they offer. Number 7. This entry comes to us not from a musician, but from an actor, and writer and director. John Francis Daly of Freaks and Geeks and Bones and the upcoming reboot of Vacation fame performed this song in a vine. Yeah, I know, Vine is absolutely the most pointless form of social media, but this song single-handedly validated its existence. Mainly by allowing me to watch this over and over again without any effort on my part. John Francis Daly's rejected theme from Breaking Bad. There's a good way to break and a bad way to break. Walter is Breaking Bad. Oh, you know that's hilarious. Number 6. Our next entry comes to us from the wonderful world of Homestar Runner. Who knew that two brothers cracking each other up with inside jokes and nostalgia could grow into an entire full-fledged universe of delightful characters, brilliantly absurd running gags, and shows within shows? There's so many delightful musical moments throughout the website, including quite a few that might qualify for this list. Strong bad scroll button and email jingles almost count if I felt like considering them actual songs. But this slot goes to one of those inside joke nostalgia shows within shows. A song which once again completely encapsulates the entire genre it's parodying. Cheat commandos may be fighting for freedom and each is sold separately. Cheat commandos are probably battling evil. It's funny because it's true. And it's catchy as hell. This song also had a reprise slash spin-off. Would somebody get this flying cotton ball out of my face? I didn't say it was a particularly different spin-off. Number 5. It would be illegal to compile a list of funny songs without including at least one entry from the only person who has ever recorded comedy music, according to early 2000s file sharing sites, the one and only Weird Al Yankovic. Al's entry on this list was written for the UHF soundtrack when they needed a... music cue that was significantly cheaper than Kung Fu Fighting. The song is... well, I'll let the man himself explain it. Basically, in its simplest terms, um, how do I describe this? 
Th this, this is a song about a guy who, who has an obsessive desire to be another person's hog. I hope not. Let me be your hog. Okay, this next song. Number four. Now the story of a cult TV show that lost everything, and the one streaming service who had no choice but to bring it back to life. But this entry comes from the original run, before the cancellation, when it was actually a TV show. The Arrested Development soundtrack was loaded with underrated original tunes that felt so natural that I often assumed they were real licensed songs only later discovering that they were written specifically for the show. But there was one song that was clearly written specifically for the show that stuck with me the longest. One that I continue to sing to this day, despite the fact that it is by far the shortest song from the entire series. Seriously, it's three notes long. Actually, my sources tell me that the lead goes by the name Mr. F. Mr. F. Ah, Mr. F. Mr. F. Why is that the song that keeps getting stuck in my head? Why did that resonate with me? Is it just the absurdly simplistic tune? Is it just the fact that it's so applicable to every pseudo-James Bondish situation? Is it the fact that the song itself is just a huge misdirection? I don't know, but for whatever reason, I still sing this little jingle all the time. As well as its sister tune. Number three. This entry comes to us from a show within a game. Midtown Cowboys from Telltale Games' Sam and Max Season 1 perfectly encapsulates all the elements of a typical lowbrow, high-concept 80s sitcom. The show is about two cowboys, played by Sam and Max, who move to the city and try to hide a cow in their apartment from their furly-esque landlord Mr. Featherly, played by respected chicken actor Philo Pennyworth, who has a strict no-cow policy and classic catchphrases like, Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! And the eight-second-long theme song perfectly encapsulates the show. And indeed, most lowbrow, high-concept sitcoms of yore. They're probably hiding a cow. To this day, I can't listen to this track without giggling. Because I am an easily amused child. Number two. This entry comes to us from everyone's favorite former half of Da Vinci's Notebook who are still active in comedy music, Paul and Storm. Their first full album as a duo is full of classic songs, some of which are a standard song length, but quite a few of which are short and to the point with their punchlines. Among the shorter ones are a series of fake commercial jingles for real products and businesses. It was a little hard to narrow it down to just one of these to include on this list. I mean, the Domino's Pizza one is pretty excellent. When you're done with your Domino's Pizza, eat the box! Because it tastes the same! But ultimately, I decided that my favorite, and the truest of these jingles, is the one that fills me with so much glee that, no joke, I once listened to it 15 times in a row in my car. Well, that's Deco Wafers, the candy that nobody likes. This jingle makes me way happier than the actual candy has ever made anybody. And number one. Ah, Mystery Science Theater 3000. The greatest television program in the history of the universe. Oh, that's right, I said it! Come at me, Comedy Central Executive Circa 1996 and Sci-Fi Channel Executive Circa 1999. And also, Gramercy Pictures Publicity Department. The show was loaded with great musical moments, both full original songs in the host segments, and covers, parodies, and other ditties sung in the theater segments. It's not unusual to steal trucks from anyone. This particular entry originated in a theater segment, just simple lyrics added to the movie score. These lyrics, to be precise. This is the song written for the train chase. This is the chase, Rocky and Ken. He tried to kill me with a forklift. But then it grew. There were reprises. They added it to a medley. It became a meme. It stuck with Misty's for years and years, and it still makes me smile. This reference alone makes the Fugitive Alien Saga essential viewing for anyone curious about the world of MST3K. And there you have it, my short statements on even shorter songs. And you are welcome for the awesome ringtone suggestions. So, do you have a favorite song that's almost too short to even be considered a song? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.